Oh, this won't do. Clear away that dirt so we oh. can get on with oh. learning. <laughs> <laughs> to learn the spell incantation. Welcome to Family Gamer TV. I'm back with Vanessa, and you've been playing a bit more of Wonderbook, yes. Book of Spells. Yes. How have you been getting on? Oh, we love it. It's great fun. It's just, yeah, the first time when we first had a little look at it, like, just was too overwhelmed by it, sort of thing. It was really clever. And now, as you got into it, the kids are really into the storytelling, and yeah, it's just really good. And so, your, your kids are seven, yeah, and seven and nine. And so, how, how are they finding it? Yes, yeah, nine year old, like a walk in the park. Seven-year-old's a little bit less um, dexterous, shall we say. Um, but she's fine with it. And actually, it works quite nicely doing it together because you can still say, like, you do this section and then it moves on to another section as you turn the pages and things like that. So it, you can share it quite easily in that sense. And he can help, although, like me, he likes to take over a little bit. But And do you think, I mean, is the Wonder Book itself something you'd like to do other books in? Or is it the fact oh, yeah. it's Harry Potter? No, well, my son, you said about a detective one, one, and that's what he's really keen on. He'd love to see that, sort of trying to solve some clues and search through, a, a search through because you can turn the pages, can't you, and it just go, like, literally turn the book, I mean, this 3D thing turns, and you can see different things. So that one he's really keen on. Um, I don't know what else. I'm going to bring out some girly ones. I don't know. Well, that, that, that one you're talking about is called Diggs Nightcrawler, um, and there's going to be some content from Disney and Pixar. They haven't said exactly what that is, but I should think it's going to follow the film, so there'll be slightly broader yeah. appeal yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a Walking with Dinosaurs um, book that's yeah. coming from the BBC. I mean Harry Potter's perfect though because that is really gender mutual isn't it both boys and girls are loving that. So, yeah. so you've been playing um, Wonder Book yeah. um, but um, have you ventured into other games on the PlayStation? Yeah we played the big <laughs> oh, li Little Big Planet Karting? Yes yeah, the karting one we played that and uh, Sam's had a great time with that. Um, other than that I haven't really played other games what would be good? Well, the, it's a bit like the Wii, so um, there's a whole range of different games for the family. But if you look on the boxes, because obviously some PlayStation games just use the controller, just the, the traditional controller, yeah. and some use the Move control. Okay. And the games that, that you really want to go for, the ones on the top corner, it says either Move compatible yeah. or Move required. Right. Okay, so the They're games. Better, are they? Well, those are the games that will use that Move controller, not okay. just not just the the dual analog yeah. sticks. Okay. Um, now, there's a game which I must get you playing called yeah. Tumble, um, which is a little bit like yeah. Boom Blocks on the Wii, which is a, a game like Jenga. Okay. So you you use the Move controller yeah. um, to position blocks, right. okay. and you take it in turns, and you each have to add blocks, okay. and then the person who whose blocks fall off the most okay. then then so loses. You're, you're just doing this, but on the screen it looks like you're building a big tower of some sort. With the Move controller, it actually knows how close you are to the screen as well as the orientation, yeah. it means it can actually, you can actually sort of place them on, whereas with the Wii, you were just sort of roughly doing it. There's the accuracy there. to it as well. Okay. So I think it's games like that, which really use the technology, but use it in a simple way, um, that are really good for families. Yeah, I think they'd like that. Yeah, that sounds fun. But the interesting thing about Tumble is, it's a download game, so rather than going to the shop and buying a disc, yeah. you go into the PlayStation Store, and you, you find the game, and you, you download, and you pay for it with some credit. So the same as like with um, iPad stuff where you'll just go onto the app store. That's They've got their own sort of store for things, have they? Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you do need to set yourself up with a, a PlayStation network account, which is okay. very simple. You just be putting in some details, email address, the usual stuff. Credit card. Yes, credit card. <laughs> yeah, and then so you tie it to some form of payment. You can either do it by credit card or you can use vouchers, which you can buy in stores. Um, and then you can choose from any game. And there's a selection. You can either buy full price games, yeah. so they're more expensive, but there's smaller games like Tumble yeah. that you can download. Um, it's quite a nice way yeah, to get. Isn't it? Just that smaller way of giving a little something without having to buy a massive, great new game. Yeah, I like it. Little Big Planet. Um, karting. So I guess that's been a game where you've all played together. Yes, well, yes, mainly the two children. I've had a play as well, but um, yeah, mainly them two together. It's great for them two, just the two of them to watch, yeah. And so you're saying that Mia struggled in, in Gran Turismo or proper racing games. So in Little Big Planet Karting, can she keep up a bit better? How's that working? Well, they seem to have this magic button that if every time it comes up on the screen, just press the button, just press the button. And then she seems to catch up with Sam, which is, I don't know whether they sort of give her a little bit of X, like if you are doing really badly, they let you press it more often. It looks like one of those kind of games. Yeah, well, there's usually a few things going on in these sorts of kart racing games and Little Big Planet karting, it's true as well. So if you're a racer who's dropped a long way behind, they'll oh, yes, let you speed up a little bit quicker, but they'll also give you better power-ups and some of those power-ups will jump you up to the front. Because the idea is that the game's going to be more fun 
if everyone's racing against each other, it's pointless having someone out in yeah, the lead, you yeah, know, exactly. for laps and upon laps. Yeah, so she loves that then because she's not just like giving up because she's. It's like oh, I've got another rocket, <laughs> or she there's one that's like a fast forward. It just kind of it seems to just whiz you forward a bit. And had you heard of Little Big Planet before playing the karting game? I hadn't, but I've seen stuff about it in the shop since. It's like one of those things, once you've seen it, you're like, oh, it seems yeah. to be everywhere. A little Sackboy character yeah, that you play yeah. with. So is, he, is there like loads of them then? Well, Little Big Planet is a franchise that's exclusive to Sony. It's been around for a long time. Right. And the key thing is that it let you have access to the controls that the developers had to make the game. So you get the game itself, yeah. but you also get the ability to make your own levels. Yeah. And then those levels can be shared online. Um, and there's a whole sort of ecosystem where people's levels are voted on and the best ones sort of float to the top. And you know, some people actually have become game developers from wow. just doing Little Big Planet. So you can download, because Sam had a go at making a track. That was really good fun. But I didn't, so you can go online and then do you buy other people's levels to play on or? No, they're free. So you, you pay for the game itself and basically all the other content online is being created by users and that's shared free. So you can put your levels up and the sort of thrill is you can then see who else has downloaded it. People can comment on it. You can download other people's levels and change them and then we upload them. So it becomes much more of a creative thing rather than just buying a game and that's it. It's more like a sort of a, a kit of tools to make your own. Yeah, and his is the like whole making this, like I don't know whether there's other forms of it, but for him, he was just making like a really cool racetrack and which swoops he's going to have. He's got like a bit where he flies over the other track. And he's, that was really creative for him. So to then see what other people have done and where he could take it to, I bet he'd love that. Yes, yeah, so and then that's, that's a, bit, a good reason to get the PlayStation Online. I don't know if you've got yours hooked up yet. You either just plug in an Ethernet connection. <laughs> well, yeah, it, takes, it does need a little bit of time. Yeah. But if you, you have a plug in a connection, yeah. then that's very simple. Or you need your Wi-Fi password yeah, key. Yeah. You just go, go, go and select it and then it's online. It will update and you'll be away. Go, give it a go. See what we can find. So there you go. There's, you know, there's quite a lot to the PlayStation 3. And it's really not until you start investigating mm. to sort of start to see how many different... Yeah. There's more to, we'll talk some more about... It's definitely more than a DVD player, isn't it? That's what I need to get my head <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, it doesn't just play games and DVDs. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so that's what we've got time for this week on Family Gamer TV. But we'll be back with more soon. <laughs>